All right, man. Today is September 23rd, 2022. This is the cozy corner of cinema. There is a beautiful breeze outside. That's a little chilly, but it's welcoming us, welcoming us into the fall weather. I love this time of year, man. It starts to get warm out. It's that perfect kind of weather where it's not too hot, not too cold. Some days are t-shirt weather. Some days are flannel weather. You go outside, you're driving out, or maybe you're driving with somebody, you're riding your bike or whatever. Maybe you're listening to a podcast. Maybe you're listening to some music or an audio book or anything of the such. And you're just taking in all this life, man. It's, it's beautiful. I think we're truly, um, truly lucky to be alive right now. I, I think about how we could be born at any point in time in history and be born under different circumstances and maybe have advantages or disadvantages but the fact is that we're here now in 2022 and we have our struggles man we have our ups and downs and that that's part of life man all that matters is how you deal with them you know you can sit back and just let the bad times just kind of take you over and engulf your days and hours where you can get up and do what it is you want to do man not sit around and stare at the wall for the rest of your life and wake up one day and wonder where all that time went. I know I'm not going to do that. I hope you're all doing well, man. I should also mention this is episode 26. This past week has been quite good, I would say. And something I wanted to discuss, which is something that I've mentioned before, man, is that when it comes to whatever it is you want to do, your art, as I'm specifically talking about. Uh, because this is primarily a film show, whether it is you want to direct a film or write a film or, you know, write a novel or act or uh, be a crew, be part of a crew on a film or paint or anything of the such. Whatever it is that gets you fired up and makes you want to keep on going on one day closer to your dream, whatever that might be. I think the effort that you put in, man, no matter how big or small, every day, as long as you're working on it, whatever your craft is, you're one day closer, man. And I want to tell you is that so with my writing, I had a bit of a, a cri not exactly a crisis, man, but an idea a little while ago where I was uh, only contributing a, like a little bit. I uh, I didn't have the motivation. I didn't quite have the the creativity in me to keep it. So I put a little bit here and there. You know, it's a tiny bit of my writing, and then end it for the day. And then some days I go back, and it just pours out of me, man. It's a creative flow, and it all just comes out. My uh, my mind is going faster than my fingers and the keyboard. I'm just like, man, this is all coming together. I'm reading it back, and I'm going, all right, you know, about time. And I think that's something important to remember is that it's very easy to compare ourselves to others around us. We want to, like I say, we want to make a great film, and then we go and see some 19-year-old made this amazing feature film, and you go, well, he's 19. I'm 30, 40, 50. I you know, I, I can't do that. He did it. You know, he's going to be the next Paul Thomas Anderson or Quentin Tarantino, man. What am I? Or you want to write the next great American novel and you look at, I don't know, the work of Stephen King and all the, all the books he's put out. And you're like, man, I, it's taken me years just to get these chapters out. And meanwhile, Stephen King's putting out multiple books a year and, you know, he's his critically acclaimed author. Everyone knows his name and stuff. You know, what am I doing? And I say throw all that nonsense out the window, man. You got to focus on you, man. You got to focus on your art and your creativity. If some days you are not motivated and you don't have it in you, that should not be an indication of you falling behind or slacking, which were ideas that I thought I was having, where there were some days where I was struggling to get sentences out in the page, man. And I just thought, man, ah, this, um, the, the, some kid who's five years younger than me, who's, who is, an amazing writer and he has all these novels and people love him and stuff and not that you're looking for any sort of uh, critical acclaim but the fact is that you know the work is out there that the proof is in the pudding as they say 
but you got to go at your own pace, man. It's not a contest. It's not a race. You could say anything can happen to us. We could, we could die tomorrow. We could die today. We could die, you know, anything can happen. Well, maybe, maybe that's possible, man. No one knows. Or you could die in 30 years or 40 years, 50 years, and you can live to your 80, 90, 100, 120. Who knows, man? I don't know. Shit. Are you kidding me? Come on, man. It's ridiculous. No matter how long it takes you, man, as long as you are putting something forward towards your art and your creativity, that's all that matters, man. If you publish, if you, if you, if you make one great chapter and you look at, you look back at it, you go, man, that's phenomenal. Moving on from there, then, hey, man, you got one great chapter under your belt, man. You know, if you want to be a stand-up comic and you're just like, oh, man, I've been bombing these sets and people are, you know, are booing me or they're heckling me and I can't, I, I don't have a quick retort back or I don't, my material's not very good. Then, you know what you do, man? You work on that material, you get back out there and you do again. There's a, there's a line from Ed Wood that I kind of live by. Which, in the context of the film, I think I've mentioned this before on the show, but I want to make sure to get just in case, because I imagine that people don't listen to every single episode. If you do, fantastic. You know, thank you. But if not, I, I don't expect anyone to. But there's a line in the film, I, I, I now, now I think about it, I definitely mentioned it last week, but I'm going to say it again. After Ed Wood had just made Glenn or Glenda, and he got a phone call, and uh, the person on the line tells him it's the worst film they've had, they'd ever seen. And Ed Wood, played by great Johnny Depp, replies, uh, worst film you ever seen? Well, my next one will be better. And that's the way, that's the way you live by, man. You wrote the worst film ever. You wrote the worst novel ever. You made the worst painting of all time. Good. Can only go up from there. You fail again. You fail 15 more times. Wow, you made 15 of the worst novels ever. Oh, but your 16th one, that was pretty good. Hey, man, that 16th, you go from there. You take what works. You take what works for you, and you go from there, man. Do not fall behind. Do not compare yourselves to others. Do not look at what people of a similar age or younger are doing and say, oh, they did this and they did that. Because you're not going to get anywhere, man. You're going to be going in circles wondering why you're not that and your art's going to suffer for it. And Then you're going to wake up one day with nothing. Nothing that you did because you were too concerned about what somebody else was doing, man. It's, it's completely ridiculous. And that's a mindset that any... And I'm not even talking about just solely for art. If you want to be a doctor, man, if you want to be a manager somewhere, if you want to... Do whatever it is you want to do, man. I'm only talking about art specifically in terms of creative, creative like film or painting or stand-up, whatever like that, just because this is a film show. But whatever it is you want to do, man, if you want to be the best janitor in the world, you got to do it, man. You got to be a janitor. You got to be the best damn janitor in the world, man. You want to be the best cashier in the world? You got to be the best, man. You got to work at it. Whatever it is you want to do, man, you can't fall behind and wonder. Because if you wonder, man, wonder is just thoughts. It gets you nowhere, man. Gigs you absolutely nowhere. Speaking of nowhere, let's talk about the box office in America. You know, I read an article recently that I thought was fairly interesting. It was about how we're at a point right now in 2022 where the box office is suffering a bit. A lot of the releases that are coming out are not quite drawing the attention. Uh, I'm sorry, not the attention. They're not quite drawing the financial um, amount that was prevalent earlier in the year. We've had... Plenty of big releases this year, primarily big studio films. We've had the runaway success of the year, Top Gun Maverick, which I have seen. I think it's a fantastic film and uh, a very fun film. We've also had some other big films as well, like uh, the Marvel stuff. We've had um, you know Elvis. Uh, even recently, Nope was a, a big financial uh, success in that film. And um, we've been going through a dip in the past couple of weeks. I like to follow the box office um, because I go to the cinema every weekend. Not to say I see everything. I don't really go to the multiplex as often, but sometimes I go there and primarily just because the films there don't typically interest me too much. But, um, you know, you got to look at it. And I look at the box office from this past weekend, and it's still not entirely, um, I think, where a lot of the studios want to be because we're at a bit of a dipping point now because you have at the number one spot The Woman King with Viola Davis, which made a respectable $19 million, which uh, was a film that I hadn't heard a whole lot about prior to its release, man. I saw a trailer for it before the... Um, I don't remember what I saw before. Something I saw recently. But then again, you look from there, you have Barbarian. You know what it was? I saw it before Barbarian. That's what it was. Gosh, man, if only I just shut up for a second and looked at the next film on the list. So when I saw Barbarian, that was the trailer that I saw. And Barbarian opened up from what I can remember the previous week to a respectable $10 million. But this week had a 
slight drop, not too much, six million, but then from there we go down. We have new releases like Pearl and see how they run. Two films I actually did see. Pearl was okay. See how they run, enjoyed quite a bit. If you get an opportunity to see it, I say go see it. Feels like a very classic kind of fun mystery film. Great cast as well. Um, those did okay, three million apiece. And then you have some of the others from previous weeks, such as Bullet Train, Top Gun Maverick, DC League of Super Pets, films that have been out for quite a while that are still hanging in there in the top ten. But we've had a dip, and it's interesting going forward how the big films that are coming out the, the, the rest of the year are, are it's going to be a little bit because I don't know exactly if I, I think the 2022 third quarter of the year is going to probably suffer a little bit. And I say the third quarter because we're going into October now. And with some of the releases coming up, I don't think that a lot of these films are going to be making the money that they expected to, or at least not are, are not going to be the big saviors of the box office. And um, if anyone has listened to the show, you know how um, much I implore the cinematic experience. I believe that, uh, I'm sorry, the theatrical experience. I, I think uh, the cinema is a holy ground for cinema. That's why it's called it, man. You call it whatever you want. But I think that when you go into a cinema, you are entering in another realm of reality. You are surrendering yourself to a giant screen in the dark with a bunch of strangers to take in the same dialogue, the same story, the same trailers, all of that. The best setup, the best home theater setup cannot touch the, the theatrical experience. And I know we all have had bad theatrical experiences. That comes with the territory, man. And I don't know of a way to solve it. But the point is, is that the theater, the cinema, whatever you want to call it, is crucial to film. And I love Amazon Prime, I love Netflix, I love all these streaming services that give us original content. Hell, man, the Andrew Dominic Blonde film is coming out uh, next week. I can't wait to watch that. Are you kidding me? I love Andrew Dominic, love Anna de Armas. Sounds like an interesting film. Would love to see it theatrically. And I know that's a weird example because that's an NC-17 film, but even, a, even an acquaintance of mine who uh, lives um, in a different part of the country, he's actually getting that theatrically, which would have been nice to get here, but that's all right, you know, still want to watch it, but would have preferred to watch it. Because even films that are streaming, or I know are going to be streaming soon, I'll still go see it theatrically, man. Um, so I look at the films coming out this the, for the rest of the year. So today, for example, uh, let's see here. We have films like, I guess Don't Worry Darling is the big one released today. It's had some Quite a bit of controversy behind it. Um, I followed a little bit of it, not too much, just truthfully. I don't really care about Hollywood celebrities and their plight and their drama. It makes no difference to me. But I wonder the financial response the film will gain. Um, it's even before all of the drama, it's a film that didn't appeal to me in the slightest. I have already seen this film, and it's called The Stepford Wives. And uh, this kind of story has just no interest to me. I think The Separate Wives is a terrific film, and uh, I don't need to see it. The, it's actually the same version of it. And maybe it's good. Who knows, man? I know that um, uh, I can't make assumptions in the film, but apparently from what I'm hearing, I, it's uh, not very good. But maybe I'm wrong. would like to be wrong. I'd love it to be great. You know, love to be proven wrong there. But will it, will it do well? I think it'll do marginally well, man. I think the drama around the film has definitely helped it to most likely gain it to a number one spot. And this is, I have looked up nothing on this. This is solely just observational opinions, but that's the big, that's the big release this week along with the Avatar re-release, which I think will do okay. I don't expect it to do amazing for a film that's been out for 12 years. Um, but in terms of what money they're expected to make. But looking at the rest of the films coming out this year, there's some that I, I wonder how well they will do. Um, I think I've seen some talk about uh, in a couple weeks. Actually, I'm sorry, next week. Jeez Louise, man. Bros and Smile. I uh, Bros have heard not as much about... I haven't even seen a trailer for that film. Not that I would go see it, but oftentimes if I would... Um, not that I would see out the trailer, I mean, is that normally if, if you see, you know, some films in the cinema, they're going to show some upcoming films like that. Uh, but I haven't seen a trailer for that yet. And um, who knows? Maybe, it, maybe it'll be good. I, uh, it's not, doesn't look like my kind of film, like a romance film, but you know, it's, uh, if it's good, Hey man, but um, 
It'll be, I think that'll probably do okay. And Smile, I've seen some talk about, I think will do okay. But the thing with these is that for the rest of September, I don't think these films will do um, incredible. I don't think they're going to do, I think they'll have respectable openings and then they're going to drop off from there. Because I look at, like, going to October, um, we have some stuff like Amsterdam, which is probably the big film of the first week, um, put up with David O. Russell, but has already not been gaining, getting some very good reviews. Apparently it's quite uh, bad. But um, that's a film that I already didn't have too much interest in. But with uh, a big cast like that, a big name like David O. Russell, I think it'll do okay. Um, some of the others coming out. The probably the next film, and I'm I'm not going to go through each of these releases. Not I'm going to just go over like a lot of the big ones. But um, I mean, uh, uh, Triangle of Sadness, which won the Palme d'Or, uh, will. Not do well financially, but I, you know that'll be one that gets a lot of Oscar talk and, and whatnot. But the the big film I think of October probably will be Halloween Ends, which will do well even more so I think than Black Adam, uh, which is the next DC film. And I think that I mean Halloween Ends is already uh, I mean Halloween is already a, a huge property as is, and I, I don't know how Halloween Kills did. I, I imagine it did pretty well. Um, but in terms of drawing people out, I, I think Black Adam will do well as well. Don't get me wrong. It's a big uh, studio film. You have, you know, The Rock in the lead and all that. But I don't know if it's kind of... I, I don't believe it'll draw in quite what they want to as well. I don't think it'll be the savior of that month. I, I, I believe that uh, Halloween Ends will be the big film of that month. Um, along with some of the other films that are, are coming out, which are a bit smaller. Um, I mean... For the rest of the year, the, the the film I'm looking forward to the most I've mentioned before is The Banshees of Itta Sheeran from Martin McDonough. Um, I really can't wait for that film, but that's a bit of a smaller film. And then from there on out, um, it's, usually there are films that pop up later in the year that don't get a lot of talk, um, even at the beginning of the uh, third quarter of the year, because there are other films that are coming that are big releases, but I wonder what it will do outside of just critical talk, because I think there are some, like the next Avatar film, The Way of Water, and um, uh, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, which will both do, I think, very well. I think Puss in Boots especially will do very well. It's just funny, because these are two properties that have, that were, I think, more popular years ago, and now are kind of coming, are having kind of a resurgence not a resurgence, but are definitely trying to be more, um, definitely more in people's conscience now, especially with the Avatar re-release happening this weekend. I think we'll kind of bring people back to that. But um, some of the other titles, like, uh, I mean, it's, it's uh, like Glass Onion, the, the second Knives Out film, is, I believe, a Netflix exclusive film. I, I, I wonder if they'll show it theatrically in terms of why theatrical releases, because they do that sometimes, even outside of the smaller theaters, like when um, Don't Look Up and Hustle were released. Those were Netflix exclusives that ran theatrically for a week before they were released, um, and like Blonde is doing right now in some cinemas. So um, I think those could have been big. And also, the I wonder if with the next Hellraiser film that's coming out uh, sometime soon, with that being a Hulu exclusive to my knowledge, um, I, I it's, it's interesting because I, I understand that these streaming platforms want these films, want these big um, properties like uh, like Hellraiser and, uh, and Knives Out, even the recent Predator film Prey. But I, I, I do wish they would run some of these theatrically for a bit so I could see them. Um, the way that they were probably meant to be seen. Um, even if it's just for a week, hey, go for it. Because I enjoyed the last Predator film, Prey. I, I thought it was pretty good. Um, but it, I wonder, if, if it was, if it played theatrically, I would have seen it. But I also wonder that if it played theatrically, they would have upped the budget a little bit. Um, because there were some times in the film where some of the CGI animals were a bit questionable. But I understand that it's not easy to um, do that sort of thing. I'm just saying, I wonder if the budget would have increased at all if it had a theatrical run. Um, because even... I look at something like Clerks 3, which just had a, I believe might still be playing uh, for another week or so, and that was a Fathom Events release, and um, it on the website it said it was going to be playing for two full weeks at one showtime a day, and it only played two times here, so I didn't get an opportunity to see it, but that's one, and but it did very well, that's thing. I think it made a million last weekend, just solely from one um, showing a day. 
So looking at it from what we'll be making the most money this year, you have the big titles, you have the Halloween ends, uh, Avatar, The Way of Water, um, even the menu, which I think will do okay. Uh, I mean, I, again, I could be wrong about a, a lot of these, is that they could be making a lot more than I imagine. I just look at it right now and I look at the, the dip that we've been in for the past couple of weeks or so. If I look at last weekend, for example, I have it up right here and uh, it, pretty much everything did pretty not so great, man, because Barbarian made 10 million, which is respectable and fine. And then this uh, Bollywood film, Brahmastra Part 1 Shiva, which I'm not familiar with. Um, it was in 800 theaters for sure. You know, I don't want to put that aside, but it, it also only made about 4 million. And then you still have a lot of the titles, a lot of the, the, the same titles that have been out for some time in the top five, you know, Bullet Train and Top Gun Maverick. Um, and even before that, I mean, the previous weekend, I mean, when there was nothing, man, it was, it was the $3 cinema week or that Saturday. And the number one spot was Top Gun Maverick with 6 million. I mean, it's, it's it been out for 15 weeks at that point. Bullet Train was still doing there, and and hey man, the the it's, it's showing man, it's showing the amount they're making. Top Gun Maverick right now has 709 million dollars in the in the U S alone, and it's past a billion uh, worldwide, which is fantastic. It's a fantastic film and should be seen theatrically to get the full experience. But at the same time, this is a film that had been out for 15 weeks at that point. That is number one. So when you get new releases like The Invitation, which come in at six million opening weekend, it's just not. Not where I think a lot of people are attracting right now. And I think that's going to be interesting. I know I've said it a couple times. It's going to be interesting going forward with some of the big films. That's why I'm curious how Don't Worry Darling does, where I believe that the drama has only helped the, the box office as well. At least, I, I don't know, maybe. Uh, will it draw in? huge amounts i don't think so i think that a lot of it, a lot of the behind the scenes stuff has definitely turned people off to watching the film at all but i look forward at films like smile and bros and i i wonder how much of a how much a financial amount they can really get in even so-called big films like amsterdam I, I don't see making a whole ton but we'll see man i, I really don't know all right sorry guys you're gonna notice a bit of an audio difference uh, in the middle of Mike talking there, I, uh, the microphone I used had a problem with it, so apologize if I lost my train of thought a bit and if the audio sounds different, but the conclusion I was getting to is that I'm no expert on any of this. This is truly just my observations of what I've seen the past weeks of going to the cinema and seeing the numbers come back. I think 2022 is still a weird time. Uh, could it pick up in 2023? Absolutely. But right now, I think that with a lot of the post-COVID films that were either delayed or were going to uh, were altered in any way, th those have already come and um, have made the money. That, I mean, Top Gun Maverick and, and the Minions movie and all that were COVID films that got delayed. So those have made their money. So now I think we're at a, a, a tricky point for the next month or two. Um, and I, I think it will pick up for sure. But right now it's just a, uh, it's just a downtime. It's just, uh, a lot of the films not making the money that, um, the studios might think they're going to make. I don't know. My, my predictions from here on out are that, is that I think um, like Halloween ends will, will do well. Black Adam, I think will do pretty good. And um, some of the other ones that I just had up right here. And now I lost. Bear with me for a second. Uh, let's see. I'm like Avatar and Puss in Boots. They'll, they'll do, they'll do good. X. We'll see what happens, man. I'm going to keep going to the cinema, and hopefully you will too, and, and we'll see what happens. There's no real conclusion to this. This is just observational, and um, we'll see. That's all I can say, man, is that we'll see. Uh, I'm going to cut this one a little bit short so I can fix this dang audio right here and get the day started. I hope you're all having a very good day, and I hope you'll have a very good weekend as well. I hope you're going to be putting some time aside to whatever it is that you need to be doing because that is all we can do. But, all right, I'm going to cut it right here. All the best, guys. I'll see you next week.